Ostrehu by Imploding Colon, read by Deathlight. Chapter 16, Flint. Was taken some last of Longstone Hoof. A tall stallion in brown gear stood behind his crouching companion. The moon is almost out, but we won't survive the nights unless you get that fire started. Don't worry me. Stonehoof hissed, his face grimacing and sweating, as he fought endlessly to make sparks between the two sticks. Blaine turned up red for dropping these sticks into the stream. Blame me, huh? A red mean stallion charged up, sneering, only to be held back by two companions. You're the one who knocked me out of the wagon, Stonehoof. The least that either of you could have done, grumbled another pony. Was well, fetched from new materials on the way here. This mountain is too bouldery to offer anything. Why are we in such a blasted hurry? Stonehoof muttered and fought with the stubborn task in front of him. It's not like Winthrow is going to be gone by the time we get there. You know that every day counts in this delivery. The tall stallion uttered. He lowered his hood so that several threads of gray mane strained from his thin neck. The more we delay here, resting our worthless legs, the more those villagers have to contend with the unthinkable. I swear to the sun goddess. Stonehoof growled, his eyes twitching. I have never had so much trouble in my life. If only we had some decent. Four blue hooves slammed into the ground before him. Stonehoof fell on his back. His legs curled like a dead cockroach's. Several more ponies gasped and pulled out glinting blades out of four limb sheaths. The tall gray stallion merely squinted at the sight. Rima stood among them with something in her mouth. With a smirk, she spat it out, so it rested at Stonehoof's tail. Stonehoof sat up, blinking down at some dry flint and steel. Glanced up at Rainbow with mixed relief and awe. All around the camp, ponies muttered, Great heavens, a pegasus? Where did she come from? I've heard about them, but never before have I seen one. Are those real wings? Rainbow merely smiled. Her eyes scanned the crowd. Finally, she saw the small stallion towards the rear of the group. The pony with the blonde hair caught her eye, then looked away. Rimbudashi's attention was gathered by the gray figure of the tall, gray stallion marching towards her. It seems to have something that can help us in our time of need. You're a remarkable timing stranger. What is your name? I'm crazy awesome. Rainbow spoke out loud. Who are you? Chuckles broke through the crowd. Several wandering ponies shared smirks and watched as the leader stepped before the blue traveler. I am Fultrot, leader of this caravan. The Grey Stallion said, We're on the trip to the village of Winthrow, east of here, to deliver some very important supplies. We are already behind by a day's journey, on the count on some incompliant weather we encountered. Rain falls where it wants to, Rainbow said, then gave a wink. At least when there's no Pegasi around. More chuckles. The elder, however, was more curious than amused. How young are you, traveler? He paced in front of her, his eyes narrow. You saw no more than twenty winters. I'm old enough to know a party that screwed when I see it. Rima pointed a hoof at the unlit fire. If you don't get that blazing, you might as well kiss again to Winthrow on time goodbye. Winthrow. Whatever. And no doubt you would like some payment for lending your resources? Fultrot exclaimed, gesturing at the flint and steel. Hmm. Rimbudash licked her lips and gazed across the camp towards the wagons. I sure wouldn't mind a change of menu from the crumbs of bread I've been eating for a solid week. She glanced at the elder and smirked. If I can afford it. His eyes were briefly resting on her golden pendant with the ruby lightning bolt. Slowly, he nodded. Yes, yes, I do believe you can. The stallion turned towards the group, whistling shrilly, and waved a hoof as he spoke. Alright, stallions. We finally have the means for setting a fire, so no more lays than a slack on a bite. Let's get the meal prepared so we can rest sooner for tomorrow morning's journey. As Iron Hoof sparked a fire to life, easily with Rainbow Dash's ingredients, the muddy ponies wandered every which way to gather whatever dry leaves and twigs they could find. A dull, crimson light swam across the clearing, and Rainbow once again saw the golden mane of the lanky stallion to the rear. He was trotting briskly towards the cluster of dry bushes when two other figures roughly bumped into him. What do you think you're going someplace? You have someplace, what gives? The short-haired pony doubled back from the brutish contact. 
Cleared his throat, and rasped forth. What does it look like I'm doing? We need to start a fire. What do you mean we need to start a fire? Yeah. The other large dine chuckled. Your cooking duty, remember? Some plate groaned. Again? His voice cracked as he gestured towards the wagons. I was stuck doing that for the last three nights in a row. And if you don't fly right, your face will be stuck on the side of the mountain. Now get them move on, you stupid cult. Some place sighed, rolled his eyes, and marched in a lurching fashion towards the wagon. He glanced over his shoulder briefly to see Rambodash's gaze catching him, and immediately he pretended to ignore her. As the toasty aura of the campfire grew warmer and warmer, Rambo looked away from the wagons and smiled at full trot. Some Mr. Tall Dark and Pell, her teeth shone in an exaggerated grin. What tails you got? 